Hey there, how's it going? Let me ask you a question, a really important question that a lot of people are asking. Is it worth to be immortal in Diablo Immortal? Is immortality something that you should be grinding for? Something that you should be spending your time on? Is it worth to be one of the 500 immortals on the server? Today in this video, I'm going to break it all down for you. I'm going to give you all of the information, the positives, the negatives, and everything you need to know in order to make that decision. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Nemo. Welcome to another Diablo Immortal video. Today, we're talking about immortality. We're talking about whether it's worth to be one of the 500 immortals on the server. Are there positives? Are there negatives? What kind of rewards do you get for being an immortal? Today, in this video, I'm going to give you all of that information. Remember, it's going to be chapters, so you can skip around anytime you like via those chapters. While you're down there, make sure to smash that like button. Hit the subscribe. Stay tuned for the latest Diablo Immortal content. What are the rewards? How do you join? All of that information. If you don't know, I will link a playlist for you up top. I have lots of videos actually describing exactly how to be an immortal, what it takes, what are the shadows, the entire cycle of strife, how it all works. There's a playlist up top I'll link for you, and I'll even link a video for you that describes the whole idea of the immortals. This will go hand in hand with this video if you don't know about the immortals. I'll give you a lot more details. Let me give you a 10,000 foot overview. Now in the story around level 43, you get introduced to the cycle of strife. The cycle of strife is a completely different part of Diablo Immortal that you don't really know about before you get there. This is a PVP slash PVE activity, an end game activity where there are two factions. Well, there are technically speaking, there are three factions, adventurers, shadows, and the immortals. Now again, Link videos for you up top. You definitely want to make sure you check them out. But at 43, you get to find out about the immortals in the shadows. You get to find out about the eternal battle. You get to find out about the lore, about the Edessa, about Keon, about Kiba, about the two armies in the systems of checks. And you get a choice. Well, a choice and not a choice, so to speak, right? You get a choice of whether you want to join the shadows or you want to join the immortals. Or you have a third choice. Of course, that is to become an adventurer, which is neither shadow or immortal. Now you do realize there's a clear distinction between the shadows and the immortals. There's a clear division between them. The shadows are in the basement while the immortals are up top. The shadows are dark and, well, shadowy. And the immortals are godly and rainy, right? They're, 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 they're the protectors of sanctuary. There's only 500 of them. It could be an unlimited amount of shadows, but only 500 immortals. You get introduced to this whole thing and you get to find out that there are multiple ways of joining both the shadows and the immortals. And there are multiple ways of doing things. But one thing that kind of is clearly told to you, well, told to me anyway, was that the immortals are sort of like godly, that they are the protectors of sanctuary. The immortals have like a responsibility to them. They wear capes, they have crowns, they have a leader, they have four lieutenants, they have statues, they have all kinds of other stuff. They have exclusive activities that are only available to the immortals. There's a lot of things that are going on in this whole immortal thing. And you think, right automatically, for me anyway, it felt like the immortals were the godly up top while the shadows were underneath. It felt to me, it felt to me as a new player that I wanted to be an immortal. I didn't know what it was all about. I didn't know what the, the rewards were, but the game made me feel like I wanted to get there. Like that was the ultimate goal for me is to be an immortal, not to be a shadow, but to be an immortal. Before you fully understand and dive in and maybe play with both the shadows and the immortals, participate in all the activities, do everything that you need to do. Until you sink your teeth into the cycle of strife, it makes it seem like immortality is a better choice. But is it? Is it really a better choice? I'm going to present some facts to you, and you can you can tell me yourself at the end of the video which one would you rather be. Right now, I can tell you that if you just jump into the game and you start playing around 43, you get to introduce to all this other stuff. You think to yourself, "Ooh, I want to be an immortal." There are exclusive cosmetics to being an immortal. You get a bunch of stuff. There's a crown. If you were a leader, you get a statue. You get to become part of the history for the books, for the server. There are a lot of other things that are involved. This is all shiny and great, but as always, in my opinion, grass is always greener on the other side. Let's find out, <laughs> what does it take to become an immortal? Well, you, you, you find out about these godly creatures called the immortals. They have crowns, they have leaders, they have lieutenants. 
They have wonderful capes. They walk around like they're immortal. Well, maybe they are immortal. I don't know. But <laughs> you want to be them and you find out very quickly that, oh, wait a minute. It's only 500. And if it's full, there's no way you can get in. So one of the things, one of the, the, the first things that you that I felt was a clear division and between the immortals and the shadows. And, and, and it was almost like I had to be good enough to become the immortal. I mean, it makes sense if you think about the, the lore, the whole aspect of it. Keon created an ultimate faction of the immortals in order to protect Sanctuary from hell itself. So the immortals should be supposedly, if you think about it from the lore aspect of it, the best players because they're going to be the ones that are going in. And like I said, protecting Sanctuary against hell. Right, the shadows on the other side are supposed to be the system of check for the immortals. They're supposed to make sure that the immortals are the best when it comes to everything. They're supposed to make sure that the immortals wipe out all of the demons if they ever do attack Sanctuary. Okay, okay, so the immortals are the best. There's only 500 of them. When you come into the server, if, the, if it's full, guess what? You can't get in. Okay, but if you do, let's say if you can get in, you get invited. There are two ways to become an immortal. One is to get invited into the immortals. Second way is to become a shadow, create a dark house or join one and go challenge the immortals for their reign. So you can either become the immortal by joining them if there's spots available on the server, 500 total. So if there is 500, you know, if there's 499 and you're it, then guess what? You're, you're lucky and you become one of the immortals. If not, the only other way of becoming immortal is to unseat them. It's for you to become a shadow create a dark house and go take them down in something called the Rite of Exile. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, again, a playlist for you up top with all of the videos explaining all of the details when it comes to cycles, shadows and the immortals and how it all works. But generally speaking, that's what you're doing. You're either going to unseat them or you're going to take one of the spots with them if you want to become immortal. Okay, okay, cool. You became immortal. We, 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 we unseated them, we took them down and you became one of the immortals. Or maybe you just joined them by an invitation because that's possible as well. In fact, one of the reasons I kind of don't like this whole thing, like, but I digress. This is a whole different video. So you, you join the immortals. Once you join the immortals, you quickly realize that there's actually a division between the immortals themselves as well. You've been working yourself crazy, grinding and doing everything you can to become part of the school club, to become part of the cool cats, to become, you know, to sit at the, at the cool table, the, at the cafeteria really right or maybe to join one of the the one of the strongest players to become a, you know to become a protector of sanctuary so to speak right you made it you're one of the cool cats but guess what once you join this lunch table you realize that there are still divisions within the immortals themselves there's 500 immortals total but out of those 500 immortals there's one leader Okay, it makes sense. One leader out of the 500, one leader for the entire server. One person is called the immortal. Everybody else is just their posse, really, if you think about it. But okay, so one immortal, four lieutenants. So again, four out of 500 out of however many in the server. Four only. That's it. Four. There are four different ones and each one has their own name. And it's specific to a buff because what ends up happening is the immortal himself and the four lieutenants have these buffs that they can activate. They're based on a timer. It's like an extra button that you get to pop every, I think once every 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And these are really good buffs, right? These are group buffs, crit buffs, like healing, etc. These are really nice ones. But the bottom line, there's only five people out of the entire server, the leader and the four lieutenants, the highest five people in the server, they're able to get this buff. You as the immortal do not get that. You get a an immortal buff. The immortal buff is basically something that actually has a lot to do with the immortal reign. I don't want to get in too into it, but the immortals, when they become immortal, have to continue their reign and push it up. And once the reign gets up to a high enough stage, you're able to get really good buffs. Well, really good comparatively speaking, because the shadows have way better buffs. Um, and you're able to get a bunch of other stuff. We'll get into that. But the, at the end of the day, you get a little bit of a buff, 15% max, if the uh, if the actual immortal reign is maxed all the way to the top, versus the 32%, 32 or 34%, 32% for the shadows if they become at max rank. So at the end of the day, even if you become immortal and you're going to be matched against the highest shadows, the benefits of the shadows, personally, when it comes to your own stats, the modifiers for offensive and defensive are better for the shadows. Even if the immortals are max rank, a max shadow whisper four is going to have 32% damage reduction and, and, and boost when it comes to versus the immortals. While the immortals only have a 15% buff at max 
reign, if that makes any sense. Okay, okay, so you, you can become one of the lieutenants, and you're not going to be the leader because, well, the immortals already have the reign. Well, you could be a leader. You could be one of the lieutenants, too. If you wanted to, if you felt like you wanted to take the spot, you can go to the shadows, join them, create a dark house, and then go challenge them. And if you take the immortals out in the rain, you can become a you know the leader of one of the lieutenants yourself. If you wanted to, you could try to do that. It is quite difficult, especially with the immortals who are already kind of like ingrained, who already have the highest stages, who already have all the rest of the stuff. It's not very easy to unseat them, but you could. That's one of the ways you can get into the lieutenant or the, of course, the immortal leader spot. But generally speaking, here you are, you get into the immortals, you're not gonna become one of the lieutenants or, or the leader, most likely. You're going to be one of the regular immortals. Now you find out that there's actually something called elites in the immortals as well. Elite is a uh, is a, a bump up, a status that's between the regular member and the lieutenant. So the way it kind of works is you got the regular members, which is 500. Within those, you have elites. And then on top of that, you have the four lieutenants. And then that's where the leader sits. So leader, four lieutenants, all of the elites, and then the members. And that's the top spot for all the 500 immortals. So after everything you've done, if you just become a regular member, you're just going to be one of the 500. Now, okay, fine. What do the elites get that the regular members don't? Well, you quickly and surely find out that when you become immortal, there are specific, there are specific activities that are tied to immortality. Specific activities that you can only do if you are an immortal. So you fight the entire server. You become one of the 500 immortals. You get there, you say, all right, I'm ready to go. What are the exclusive activities that I can do? Well, you could do an activity called Keon's Ordeal. This is very tied to the Immortals. Only the Immortals can do it. But when you join, you quickly realize that actually not all the Immortals can participate in this exclusive only Immortal activity. In fact, only 48 players can participate. When that makes sense, because this is a 48 player raid, but only Immortal Elites can go into Keon's Ordeal. So a regular Immortal member, you can't participate in Keon's Ordeal. You can't do it. Now, what do you get from Keon's Ordeal besides the whole protecting Sanctuary, participating in a 48-player raid, in a, four teams of 12 to destroy four different bosses? You get some, you know, you get chance for some legendary gear. In fact, when you beat you, one of the four bosses, there's usually, like, they usually drop some gear. There's chance for it to be legendary. I actually got a legendary from killing one of the bosses. And then when you get out of Keon's Ordeal, at the end, there's like a little lottery system where you have four rounds, like four chances to win some good legendary gear as well. So in other words, you get some rewards and then you also get a chance to win legendary gear on top of that. I mean, that's not the only thing you get, right? You get the whole idea of participating in a 48 player raid, an exclusive immortal activity, protecting Sanctuary, because in the lore aspect of it, that's what you're doing. You're protecting Sanctuary from hell by doing this whole Keon's ordeal, securing the Adessa's blessing. And Diadessa's blessing is going to allow you to fill the immortal vault. That's one of the positives about being an immortal. This is something that we're going to talk about in a second, the immortal vault. But at the end of the day, that's another bad taste that you get in your mouth right away. Well, that's what I did anyway. When I got in, I was like, what do you mean only the elites can participate in Keon's ordeal? I thought I was the immortal. I thought I was part of the 500. Now, luckily, your boy is or was an elite when he was an immortal because that's right. I actually left immortality. I left for several reasons. I'll tell you about why. Okay, okay, so Keon's ordeal, we got it. Only the elites can do it. Eh, not very cool. I'm not really into that. And the idea is that the leader can kind of choose who can go into Keon's ordeal and who cannot go into Keon's ordeal. That's a good thing and a bad thing if you think about it. Because I realized that the idea is that there was only good players that should go into the Keon's ordeal, right? Maybe. I guess high level is you're protecting Sanctuary against Hell itself, and you should be bringing the best warriors, so to speak. I mean, I tell you, we played for a little while, we got into it, it was really not that hard. I mean, I really don't think that at least the first, I don't know, few difficulties of Keon's ordeal that we've seen, I mean, I don't think it would be that difficult for someone who is decently geared to take it down, especially in a group of people. So I'm not really sure I'm all up for the whole idea of only the best players can participate in Keon's ordeal. But I understand that you need to hold the Odessa's blessing, so maybe you'll win the best players. But at the end of the day, I believe everybody can participate. But as soon as you get in, you get right away. The first thing that you know is you are not elite. Guess what? You can't play. Now, another activity that you can do is the Immortal Vault. Immortal Vault is an activity that's a PvE slash PvP activity that both factions can enter. Both factions can participate in. 
The shadows and the immortals can both be in this raid the vault activity. The shadows raid the vault, the immortals protect it. So if you're an immortal and the alarm rings, you can go into the vault and basically protect it. Now, why would you want to protect the vault? Because it holds all of the good stuff that you need. It holds gold, honor, it holds rewards, and when I say rewards, I mean legendary gear, and Ascensia. So all of those things that you're going to need as an immortal. The legendary gear is actually kind of cool. So as an immortal at the end of the week, if the vault is full or it, you know, it holds, you're able to, you basically get delivered like a bunch of honor and gold just for being an immortal. So that's nice. You get honor and gold weekly for being an immortal. That's one of the positives. The other positive is that you can choose from one to three pieces of legendary gear from the vault. Your choice, you get to choose. Now, whether you get them or not is a different story. In fact, there's a whole contribution system that's involved. I'll tell you about that in a second. But you have a chance of possibly getting some of the legendary gear that you want as well from one to three pieces. So you can get some, some of that. And then, of course, there's Essentia. Essentia is what you're going to need if you're the leader or the lieutenant in order to like pay to like initiate Chaos Ordeal. In order to start Chaos Ordeal, it requires Essentia. Essentia is what's going to be kept in the vault. And you're going to need it in order to run it. If the shadows raid the vault, take the Essentia out, you're not going to be able to, well, you're not going to be able to kick off Keon's Ordeal. Then we will do a lot of other things. It's one of the duties of immortality. You have to basically watch the vault during certain hours and jump in there and fight and protect it. And remember, there's a whole server of shadows. There potentially could be 20,000 shadows or more, right? There's only 500 immortals. This could possibly become a daunting task, but that's the idea. You have to protect the stuff if you want it at the end of the week. Last but not least, you also could participate in the Rite of Exile, but again, only 80 people, only 80 immortals out of the 500 are going to be able to go and participate in the Rite and protect the immortality. So, overall, if you think about it, you can become one of the 500 immortals. Sure, you can possibly participate in Keon's Ordeal, one of the exclusive activities for the immortals, if you're an elite or, you know, the leader or whatever. You could also participate in Raid the Vault if the Vault gets raided, which I'm 100% sure it will. <laughs> You're gonna need to do that, in fact, if you wanna be an immortal, because, well, in order to run Keon's Ordeal, get the rewards and etc., that Vault has to be defended. That's one of the things that you'll have to do. Right of Exile for 80 people out of, the, out of the 500 as well, maybe. Probably the best because those are the folks that are going to be have to go and fight the Shadows to make sure that the Immortals stay Immortal. But those are probably going to be the best Immortals as far as PvP goes. Because that's what the Right of Exile is. It's a PvP battle against the Shadows, 80 versus 80. I will link a video for you up top if you want to check that out. But that's kind of what's going on. And what else do you have to do as an immortal? Well, there are dailies. They're called immortal dailies. It's really not that bad, to be honest with you. An immortal daily just consists of usually like two bounties. You'll have to upgrade a, a legend, a gem or a legendary gem. You'll have to upgrade a piece of gear, things like that. Like the normal things that you that you would do on the regular day if you were just playing the game. It might force you a few times to do things that you won't, like go to an extra dungeon that's not on your bounty board or do an, an activity that you maybe normally wouldn't, like going to do a battleground because it'll give you some points. Or maybe even there are some other activities that are tied into the Immortal Dailies, which I don't like. Like, for example, uh, the activity that's Raid the Vault or Keon's Ordeal. Keon's Ordeal is really tough to get into, right? And, and, and if it's already on the Immortal Daily, that means that a lot of people are not going to be able to complete it. And why do you need to complete Immortal Dailies? Because when you complete the dailies, well, this is, by the way, different from the bounties themselves. So when you complete the immortal dailies, you get something called raw essentia. You take this raw essentia and you contribute it to the rain. That's one of the big differences between immortals and shadows. Shadows are all about themselves. They're all about yourself. Yeah, you can join a dark house, become part of the team, etc., etc., etc. But at the end of the day, it's all about you. The immortal is about the rain. It's about the immortality. You have to do your dailies in order to get a raw essentia so you can contribute that raw essentia to the rain so you can progress the rain further. In order for immortality, for the rain that you're under, for the leader, for the lieutenants, for everybody to continue going, to become stronger, to get better buffs, to increase their vault, you know, to, to basically do anything, to even get more immortals, because you actually start off with 150 max can't even get to 500 yet. You have to like increase your reign to get to the max amount of immortals. But to get all of that stuff, you need your regular members, your regular immortals to do these dailies, to contribute essentia to the reign, to continually push it up. 
And when you do these dailies and you contribute this Essentia, you get like a rating system, basically a contribution rating system. That's a leaderboard, so to speak. The more people contribute, the higher you get put on a leaderboard. And then of course, at that point is when you're able to maybe get a little bit, I would say, of an advantage over other people. Now, what kind of advantage? Well, in the in the rights of the leader himself, right? If you're the leader or the lieutenant, you're going to want to make sure that your reign stays up. In order to do that, you need the regular members to do their dailies and to contribute raw center to the reign. So I'm sure that, you know, being the fact that you're one of the top contributors, you get some, you know, you get a little bit of the benefit in, in, the, in the eyes of the leadership, I would say. On top of that, you also kind of get a little bit higher in the pecking order when it comes to uh, the well, when it comes to getting some of the good stuff out of the vault, right? Being able to get a little bit better gear because when you're higher in a contribution system, you can override other people. You can you, you get a little bit more, basically. Long story short, it's a rating system that kind of shows how much you contribute into the rain itself. And with that, you get a little bit higher on the leaderboard and you possibly can get better rewards. That's kind of the idea of the whole contribution system. But the mortal leader and the lieutenants, they need the members to do the dailies, to contribute to the rain, to push it all the way up. Long story short, that is something that you're going to need to do as an immortal. So now that we know about immortality, we know how to join in, we know the activities, Let's talk about the positives and the negatives. What are the positives about being an immortal? Well, at the end of the week, if the vault is actually intact, you get some honor and gold delivered to you for just being an immortal. That's awesome. That's extra stuff that you get that you normally wouldn't. So honor and gold if the vault is intact. You also can get some extra gear, legendary gear that you can choose if you're high enough in the contribution packing order, if you put enough stuff in, if you do enough dailies, and if the vault is held intact, and you could possibly get some extra legendaries. Cool. You also get some stuff for turning in the immortal dailies. You get large bags of scrap. You get like a, some once in a while, I got a legendary piece or two. You get things like that. And you also get that when you're a shadow, when you're turning the contracts, you also get large scraps and possibly some legendaries as well. So I feel like that's kind of going to balance out. But in general, like I said, you get extra honor and gold in the vault if it's kept and you get possibly, you know, up to three legendaries if you're high enough in the pecking order. And those legendaries could be your choice as you pick whatever is available in the vault. Last positive, and this one is not materialistic, but you get, of course, the whole honor aspect of being an immortal, not physical honor that you can spend, but the brownie points of being an immortal, being a protector, being a savior, the lore of it, the whole aspect of you actually protecting sanctuary against hell itself. I love that. I really do. I think it's really, really cool. It's definitely one of the positives about being an immortal. You're the protector of sanctuary itself. Okay, so negatives of immortality. Well, there are a few. One for me is the ex exclusivity of it. Now, I understand 500 out of 20,000 in the server, okay. Maybe it's good to be an exclusive club, but I feel like once you get into that club, there's still division within that club itself of the elites of the of all of that. I feel like the immortal stuff is too exclusive. I love the aspect of Kian's ordeal. I love the way it makes me feel. It, it, it does make me feel godly. The experience of it. I love the activity, the four bosses at once and the mechanics and the raids. It's a very cool thing for Diablo Immortal. I feel like it's something that the game that a lot of people in the game should experience. And one of the negatives about being the or, or about this activity being tied to the immortals is the fact that not anybody can participate in it. In fact, nobody can participate in it except the 48 people. And that's one of the negatives is the fact that you could be an immortal and still can't get into Keon's ordeal. You need to be an elite in order to participate in this exclusive activity, in this 48 person raid that a lot of people want to get into. You're only going to be able to do it if you're an elite. And what that's going to do, that's going to create more division within the immortals themselves. They're already a small group. If you think about it, 500 out of 20,000 and you're creating a division within them themselves because of the whole Keon's ordeal being exclusively tied to just the elites. I already have a problem to Keon's ordeal being tied to just the immortals because like I said, 500 out of 20,000 are going to be able to participate and you know and kind of like experience this really cool mode on top of that when you become part of the 500 you still can experience it because only 48 people can run it 
On top of that, this whole Keon's ordeal is actually part of your immortal dailies sometimes. And when that happens, you get contribution points for continually doing it. And you can take those contribution points and contribute to the rain and become higher on the pecking order when it comes to getting more stuff. Do you see what I mean? In general, this will just create more politics. The fact that the leader has a choice of who goes into the immortals or into the, I'm sorry, Keon's ordeal is a positive, but also a negative because that can create politics. That can create favoritism. I understand, but I'm not, this should be like a sign up system or something like that. I'm not a developer. I'm not going to offer solutions, but I will tell you that it does feel bad for someone who gets into the immortals, who tries everything they can to get in there and then still can't participate in Keon's ordeal because it's only to the 40 people It's only to the elites. Then the politics gets involved a whole favoritism. And I'm going to allow you to run Keon's ordeal because you're going to be able to get contribution points and get better gear because you're my friend versus blah, blah, blah and on and so forth. And that can cause a lot of drama. That's really my overall theme here. The fact that I love the immortals, I love the idea of them, but I do feel that the negatives here are politics. There's going to be a lot of drama involved with this. Being an immortal or being the immortal group is, is you have to be a unit. You know, you have to be strong. There's only 500 of you and you have to hold the whole server. Basically, you have to hold hell itself back. <laughs> you have to protect sanctuary. I don't think that we should be dividing the immortals even more and they're already divided. So that's kind of my opinion. I feel like that's a negative. Not a lot of people are going to be able to play it. So the exclusivity aspect of it is not very good because it divides the immortals even more. You know, there's already only 500 of them versus the entire server. I really do feel like we shouldn't be dividing them even more and saying, well, yeah, you can get in and play, but you can't because you're not high enough rank or you're not the elite. I mean, there's only 500. Like, do we really need even more division within the immortals themselves? I feel like they all should be the same. That's one of my negatives. I feel like even if you do get in and grind and do all of the things that you need to do, the chance of you actually getting something it, like, OK, so you get into this 500 exclusive club and then you have to be part of the 48 to join Keon's ordeal and play. OK, and then you get into this whole part of 48. And out of that, there's a lottery at the end of the Keon's ordeal. So it's not even a guaranteed legendary you have to be lucky even being part of the exclusive club of the 500 of the 48 out of the entire server this to me doesn't make any sense it's not efficient it's not worth it really that's where i'm going to come up with this if you really think about it there are a few other negatives right you have to make sure this is something that you have to do right the immortal dailies are going to become part of your daily routine it's an it's a positive to some folks who want extra things to do because they're bored it's a negative to others who don't have time I need to do the bounties and a bunch of other stuff and they don't have time to grind immortality as well. You know, they want to grind their own levels and etc. So that could be a, a positive and a negative. If you really think about it to me, that's a bit more work for not a lot of rewards. There's a possibility for some rewards. I could be lucky. I could be an elite. I could get into Keon's ordeal. I could possibly get lucky and roll one of those lottery pool systems where I get a piece of legendary gear. Or I could grind really hard, make sure I complete all the dailies, stay in the positives with the leaders and the, you know, and the lieutenants and get all the contribution points done and hope and pray that I get some of the rewards that I want, the, you know, the max rewards from the vault. If we keep the vault, because at the end of the day, if you really think about it, another negative of being an immortal is there's only 500 of you. 500 immortals versus 20,000, 50,000 shadows. How many of those shadows are going to be nonstop raiding the vault? How many immortals are going to be able to protect that vault for how long? Do you think that you're honestly going to be able to hold that vault down? Hmm. I don't know. It's going to be a tough one because remember, there's a lot of shadows. They're going to be constantly, constantly beating that vault down on top of that. You're going to need the essential in the vault in order to be able to even run Keon's ordeal, right? What happens when the vault gets emptied because the shadows nonstop just beating it up every time? And what happens when you don't have enough essentia to start Keon's ordeal because the, the, the shadows are continually raiding the vault? Hmm. It might create a couple of issues. I don't know. To be honest with you, there are a couple of negatives that I feel outweigh the positives for immortality for me. And ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly why I left the Immortals. I didn't leave the Immortals for the extra scoria. That's something I didn't mention. If you're not part of the Shadows or the Immortals, you're an adventurer. Adventurer is something that, well, you don't have to do any of those things, but you do get extra scoria. Scoria is something that you need in order to upgrade the Hell Aquarius. 
which will give you some extra bonuses and and as well but if you're part of the immortals one of the negatives is you are sort of held back an adventurer can buy extra scoria from the honor merchant and get extra scoria for completing their bounties therefore an adventurer is able to actually push their heliquary a lot faster than an immortal or a shadow so that's one of the negatives to the immortality and being a shadow is the fact that you can't get any extra honor but again that is not why i left immortality it really isn't a lot of people left because of that like i said there was an update a couple of weeks ago they basically changed this. They gave the adventurers extra scoria for doing things. And a lot of people left immortality instantly. And, and they left, they're doing their score, they come back, they jump back and forth. But at the end of the day, I left, not for that reason. I left for all the reasons that I told you about. I left because I feel like immortality is not worth it. I mean, this is my opinion. You tell me what you think down below, of course. As always, I present you with all the facts and you tell me what you think. But in my opinion, I don't, I don't feel like it's worth it. Now, I... It was different for me when I first started. When I jumped the game, when I joined and I started playing, I thought immortality was like the, the most amazing thing. I really wanted to, to, to become one of the immortals. You know, I pushed, I, I was very excited for it. I couldn't wait to be a protector of sanctuary and all of that. And when I got there, well, I'm not saying I was disappointed, but I am saying that to me, or logically, it makes no sense to be an immortal. You get a little bit extra honor and gold at the end of the week if you hold the vault. Now, I'm in a little bit of a different situation. We're on the content creator server. When the servers are full, when everything is full blown, it's going to be very difficult to hold the vault, in my opinion. What's going to end up happening is the whole immortal thing. Is it worth being an immortal right now? It's not. And, and if you really think about it, okay, some people are saying, well, maybe some of the best gear is going to be tied to the vault. You know, what if... Some of the best gear in the game is tied to the vault and that's how, you know, that maybe that will be a positive for being an immortal. And I strongly disagree with that for two reasons. One, well, it's going to be hard keeping the gear in the vault, first of all, because like I said, 20,000 shadows are going to be trying to get in. Two, I feel like they're never going to tie the best gear to a certain activity. I feel like activities in general are going to randomly drop gear for you. So if you want three or four stack gear, I don't think that you're going to just be able to get it from the vault. The positive of being an immortal would be to pick certain gear from the vault, right? If you're able to hold the vault down from the shadows, at the end of the week, you get a, you know, a pickings, right? You get three choices if you're the highest contributor. And remember, you have to be the highest contributor. You have to be part of the whatever, you know, one of the best. Do all the stuff in order to actually be able to pick from one to three pieces that you could could possibly get if someone who is not higher than you in the contribution chain overrides you and takes it you could possibly get it but like this is such a gamble like that's such a gamble is it worth it all of that oh the keon's ordeal cool activity i like it because of the activity that's the positive this one probably one of the only reasons that i would want to do that is because of the experience of running keon's ordeal but the rewards not worth it there's a lottery at the end of keon's ordeal you have a chance of getting something Four chances of getting something. But guess what? I played Keon's Ordeal. Did I get anything? Nope. Not one thing. And I was supposed to be the protector of Sanctuary. So positive. It's a cool experience and exclusive and nice and, and, and great. Negative. No one can play it. 48 people. Good Lord. And when you do, you still don't get rewards. Or there's a chance that you might not get rewards. To me, that, just, that's a negative. I, I really left a bad taste in my mouth. Not because I want a participation trophy, but the idea of the whole lottery and exclusivity of it. Only 48 people can play this thing? Come on, man. This is a beautiful mode. What we should do is get some sort of a non-competitive Keanu's ordeal or something. You know, like there's a Rite of Exile and then there's like the, the chill version for the for the Battlegrounds. We should have something like that for the for the Keon's ordeal. Do not hide Keon's ordeal behind 48 people only. There's a lot of other folks who should try it and play it because it's a really cool mode and I believe, believe that the entire community should try it. It's really awesome. I do not know why it's tied to just the Immortals and then it's tied to just the Elites. Come on. So that was Keon's ordeal. Kind of an eh for me because of those reasons. And then Raid the Vault was a good activity on both the Shadows and the Immortal side. I did find out on the Immortal side it's a bit difficult to get into. It's probably because we're on a test server and this isn't like a full, you know, once the shadows, once there's 20,000 shadows getting into the, the vault or trying to, maybe a bit different, but I did find that some of the immortals were camping the vault and just jumping in as soon as they could, not allowing others to get in. 
because, well, maybe because it was part of the Daymortal dailies and they wanted to get the points or I don't know what the reason was. It probably will be different once the server is full, but that was one of my experiences with that. I couldn't really get into the Raid the Vault. And last but not least, I'm going to talk about the leader and the lieutenants. The fact that there's only one leader and four lieutenants, it's a positive and a negative. There's five spots in the entire server that is held by the leadership team. This leadership team will drive what the immortals are going to be like, what the politics, the toxicity and their favoritism is going to be like. They're going to be the people they are going to be kind of like focusing and driving the immortal ship. So that's a positive. If the group is good, it's a negative when the group is not good. And this group of five people has a lot of power, a lot of power. They can either you know, used wisely or abuse, create toxic situations, take advantage of people and make immortality not worth it. So positive and a negative, which one do you think is going to be? It all depends. It's a gamble. And this is why I don't particularly like that. Like, I feel like that's too much power in a sense to be an immortal, to be the immortal leader is actually a different meaning. The more I think about it, the more I've been playing Diablo immortal, the more I, I was a shadow and then I became immortal and then I was an adventurer and then I went back to shadow. The more I thought about the whole cycle and all of it, the more I realized that being an immortal, being the immortal leader is more of a responsibility than a positive. It's more of something that will require a specific type of person. It isn't going to be the best player. I've said this several times in some of my other videos, podcasts and etc. I really do feel like the best player shouldn't be the immortal. The immortal has a lot of other things that they'll have to do. This is not going to be a job to be an immortal. You have to there's I'll make a whole video about what the actual responsibilities of, of the immortal are. But in general, it's going to be a job and it's going to require a lot of work and it's going to require a lot of time that's going to be taken away from you being able to grind. So the immortal leader has to be a good coordinator, has to be a good leader, not just a good player. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on. There's too much, in my opinion, when it comes to politics, there's too many holes that can be manipulated. It can be twisted by the wrong people in those positions. And maybe that's the whole part of the cycle of strife, right? Maybe. Maybe because of that, maybe if you see something like that and you don't like it, you can drop down, become a shadow and go take them out. Maybe if you are the immortal leader and you're running things not right and you're causing toxicity in politics and whatever in the cycle in the immortals, maybe you will be taken down and maybe that is the cycle of strife. But all in all, at the end of the day, I do not feel that it's worth being an immortal right now. Maybe a leader, maybe a lieutenant, one of the five spots, maybe I would say, but at the end of the day, like I said, to me, it's not worth it. I'd much rather be a shadow or an adventurer, just play around and do my thing. You let me know what you think about this. Let me know down below. Would you rather be an immortal? Would you rather be a shadow? Would you rather be an adventurer? Do you agree or disagree with me? Are there any points that I missed? I would love to know down below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.